Hey, so I was trying to work out how to apply like a custom color map to my X-Gen Groom, specifically in Redshift, and I've worked out how to do it. So let me show you. So I have a mock scalp here, scalp geo. Um, you gotta make sure that the Lambert material is assigned to it, and you also need to make sure that the UVs don't have UV, UV seams and you're taking up as much real estate of the zero to one space as possible. So with that all set up, also make sure to set your project, file set project under the folder that you're working in because that's where all the XGen information will be saved and stored. All right, so with all that done, we can select the geo and click create new description. Let's call this xgen test underscore des for description. And let's place in shape guides and let's do an xgen test col for collection as well. And let's hit create. Uh, and then we want to hit this button here to start adding guides. So I'll just speed this part up. All right, so with all the guides placed, we can now generate the hair by hitting this button here. Now, in the latest version of Maya, I've noticed a bug where if you have the hypershade open, which I do on my other monitor, it won't generate. So you need to close that and then it should generate. Now we wanna set the density to 300, uh, the width to 0 0.01, the taper to 0.8, the taper start to 0.5, turn off tube shade, and turn off only primitives in the view uh, under preview output. Now, while we're under preview output, there's a little uh, thing we need to add, which is this custom shader parameter. So let's set this to color, and the name needs to be specific to the description you're working with. So if you're doing eyebrows and hair, Give it a give it a name specific to, to the area the region you're working on. In this case, I'm just going to call it XGen Test, and hit plus to add. So that's really important because we need to use this this term somewhere else. Let's also go to modifiers and add a noise. So let's add that. Uh, set the frequency to 0.1. Set the magnitude to two. And now we have a nice base groom. Uh, we can also click this button here to turn off the guides. All right, cool. So now we need to jump into the hypershade. So we can open that back up again. And these are some of the base shaders. This is the shader it's automatically generated here. But we wanna create a new shader. So specifically the, um, let's set, type in hair, the Redshift principal hair shader. This is their latest and greatest. Uh, I wanna turn albedo mix up to one, melon to zero, redness to zero. We wanna create the Redshift user data color node. And then we can plug this into the albedo and into the tint. And then we can give this the attribute name. So it needs to be the same as that attribute we created before with the sa exact same spelling and case. So xgen test. So that's now gonna automatically link that to the other um, location to the uh, custom shader parameter. Now we need to create the map here. So um, make sure the hypershade's open for this. And then we can click on um, create map. Let's set a size 512. Let's make it black. And then let's give it a name, xgen test diff and hit create. So there it is. Now you'll get this big X. I just like to hit save. Give it a second. And then if you hit the paint button again, you can now paint. So you can either paint a map in here manually, like in the viewport of Maya, but you don't have heaps of control. So you might want to bring in your own map. So to do that, we need to jump back into the hypershade. And you'll see here that it's connected a um, XGen test diff file to a Lambert shader here. So it's it's this file that we want. And so you basically can just open and then load whatever, whatever image you want into this. So I'm just gonna go to camo, 
Let's pick a good camo here. Where's a good one? Probably this one, some nice contrast. Hit open. Now with that selected, nothing is gonna happen until you hit save. Now you can see that it, that was applied there, but now we need to apply the actual redshift shader to this. So let's select the X gen and then apply our RS principle here. Let's actually rename this. Let's call this X gen test shader. And now we should be able to render. So I'm just gonna turn on my light rig, um, go to my camera and open up Redshift and hit render. So there's another bug in XGen um, and it's not a big deal, but whenever you create a noise modifier, it doesn't look right initially. Like you can see some of the hairs are poking off the side here, but then some are getting pushed back. You just need to render again and it'll work. So I'm just gonna save this to show you for comparison, but I'm also going to hide the scalp and show the base head instead, which has a proper um, shader assigned to it. The map is looking a little dark. So I'm also gonna increase the value in that. So let's come here. We can basically take the user data, hit tab and type in color correct and get the redshift color correction node. Plug that into the input. And then let's plug this into the tint and the albedo using the middle mouse button. And now we can increase the color here to two. And then go back to Redshift and render again. So this should brighten it up and also fix the, the noise in this render. Okay, and there we go. So you can see the noise is working correctly now and we have better color happening. So yeah, sometimes you just need to boost the, uh, the base color um, like we did with the color correct. But that's about it. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks.